with somebody that is very important in my life. And if you know me very well, it's unusual for me not to talk about her. And that's my maternal grandmother. So my grandma was an amazing storyteller. So there are two things that she's known for, her cooking skills and her storytelling. Every holiday just like this, I, we spent it in our maternal grandma's house. And every night, we, we, eat, um, we ate dinner outside every night, right? And personally for me, I'm a slow eater. But oftentimes, I find myself rushing the food because of what comes next after food. And that's the storytelling, right? So every night, she would tell us stories about the tortoise, the elephant, and the foolish goats. There's always a foolish goat in all her stories, right? And I noticed one thing. In her storytelling, she always finds a way to infuse something about the Onicha culture using friction. Interesting. All right. So, and also, I also used to wonder that if there were mosquitoes, if there were mosquitoes back then, because right now I can barely stay outside more than 7 p.m. Because I'll complain about mosquito bites and everything. But then I used to stay out all night and just pray and just beg and cry and ask her not to stop that, just one more story, grandma, and stuff like that. But times have changed. And apart from the mosquitoes, with the generator noise from ours and the neighbors, it's almost impossible to relieve that experience anymore, right? Spatial realities. Now, what that means is infusing our culture in a special space, simulating the culture. Imagine um, wearing a VR or an AR gear. When I say VR, I mean virtual reality or augmented reality devices. And you're able to live in, you are able to live in the moment, live in the historical moment. You are able to experience things that happened as far back as 16th century. We are able to join them in the migration from the Bini Kingdom across River Niger down to this land that we set to today. Imagine living in that kind of reality. And imagine preserving intangible cultures in using technology in that kind of space. Interesting, right? We can also use things like artificial intelligence and machine learning to also infuse it in our present reality. So instead of always speaking English to your Siri, why not build an AI that understands your Nietzsche dialect and follows your voice commands? A very good way to preserve language, right? Another way to preserve some of this intangible cultural heritage also is, for, for, for example, for some of us that live outside the country or outside the community at large, when you're living on Nietzsche, you're not just taking on Nietzsche in your heart, no, you're also taking on chat in your pocket and on your phone. And with the click, on a click of a button, it appears as if you never left. You are in touch with every single thing happening, every single festival, every single tradition. It just comes to you. This is another way to preserve intangible cultural heritage. And lastly, cultural heritage doesn't change. But I think the way they pre that we preserve them should evolve. And there are so many things that technology can offer us. And I think, or I believe, that you guys should join me on this, tech on this journey to explore new ways using technology to preserve our culture. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>